This week on Milk Street, we start with a road trip to New Mexico for the perfect recipe for carne adovada, pork stew with lots of chilies. Then we head down to Mexico for a Mexican chicken soup. This is a green pozole with tomatillos, hominy, and chicken, of course. And finally, we end up with one of the great recipe ingredients of Mexico, chocolate. We do a steamed chocolate cake. It's made on top of the stove for an incredible silky texture. So stay tuned for New Mexico Meets Mexico right here on Milk Street. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular's goal has been to provide wireless service that helps people communicate and connect. We offer a variety of no-contract plans, and our U.S.-based customer service team can help find one that fits you. To learn more, visit ConsumerCellular.tv. Cooking happens in the kitchen, but life happens around the kitchen table. The 1919 Collection, celebrating yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Visit us at www.1919cookware.com. Now, it's rare that I don't have a story to tell at the beginning of a show, but uh, Carne Adovada is actually Matt's story, because you went to New Mexico, and you stopped by a bike shop, and they, they directed you to your favorite place. Adovada is one of those dishes that everybody makes. I went to a bike shop. Now, and this is a bicycle shop, bicycle. not a biker shop. You go to the biker shops. Yeah. I go to the bicycle shops, and I asked the mechanics, and everybody had their own opinion, and they sent me to a great place called El Parasol. They had a great version, it had a nice level of acidity to balance the sweetness of the pork. It was spicy without being too hot. And it had just this incredible rich chili flavor. And that's really one of the defining flavors of this dish is these great New Mexico chilies. That looks like a lot of chilies. It does. We're looking at six ounces total chilies, but they're not hot. They have great complex, deep, fruity flavor. Okay. So we have good. New Mexico chilies, and then we also are mixing them with Mexican guajillo chilies, which are slightly fruitier than the New Mexico chilies. You really want to look for a pliant, supple texture. You, you want to avoid anything that's cracking because it means the quality could be a little low. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear the stem off, and then we're going to shake the seeds out. In dishes like this, these long cooked braises, seeds can make the dish really bitter. Then just tear it into pieces. So I had, I've made this dish a couple times. I had someone call me who looked at our recipe and said th there was a misprint because they thought the amount of chilies was so big. So I just want to say this one more time. This is a recipe about the flavor of chilies. It's not really about using chilies primarily for heat, right? And mm -hmm. so that, that amount's okay. That amount is perfect. It's six ounces total chilies. Okay. And it really does seem like a lot, but they aren't hot varieties of chilies. These are really about the flavor. Okay. And this is the way they do it in New Mexico. I just want you to make me feel good about this. Yes. Okay. So we're going to break apart those pieces. And then we're going to combine them into one bowl. You can really see the amount there. It is a lot of chilies. And then we're going to soak them. We really need to hydrate the peppers to soften those dried skins. We're going to let them sit for about 30 minutes to hydrate. And then we'll puree them. In the meantime, let's deal with our pork. Okay. So we're going to make this dish with a five pound Boston butt, it's one of my favorite cuts. But one of the things we really need to do is trim it up pretty well. So to make it more manageable, I'm just gonna cut it into slabs and then trim out each slab. So I'm gonna trim off that fat cap first. And what we're looking for for this dish is about one and a half inch cubes. And then just work around the edges. There's a lot of fat in between the, the pieces of meat, like in here. Yep. Do you worry about that or you just leave that in? I try and trim off some of it. I mean, fat's flavor. And what you can always do at the end of this dish is skim off any excess fat. And with a cut of meat like this, always follow the seams, too. There's seams right. connecting all the meat together. I'm using a chef's knife for this, but you can also use a paring knife or a boning knife. So Chris, we trimmed our pork, and our chilies have soaked for half an hour. So they're really supple, and we're going to puree them now. 
this can be a messy process. Especially if you don't put the top on the blender. Yes. <laughs> then it would be messy. <laughs> well, they sort of have the consistency of wet leaves in November. So if you have a really small blender, you may want to do this in two batches, but this is pretty big, so we can do it in just one. And we want to puree it till it's really smooth, so it takes about a minute. Okay, it's looking really smooth. So we're gonna do a couple of things here. First of all, we're gonna save a half cup of this to finish the stew with. It's gonna add bright chili flavor at the end. Okay. We're gonna save the rest of it to cook the pork in. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a half cup water back in. Put the lid on, and give it a shake to loosen it up. And this is gonna form the basis of a marinade for the mm. pork. So let's pour that on the pork. We're gonna add two teaspoons of salt, then we're gonna stir it up. So that combination of the chili left in the blender and the water and that two teaspoons of salt is gonna serve as our marinade. So we're gonna cover it up, put it in the fridge for about an hour, and then we'll finish our adobado. It's marinated for an hour, and now we're ready to start cooking. We're gonna start this off with one of my favorite fats. Lard. It's great here, it adds some sweetness to the dish. If you don't wanna use lard, Grapeseed oil works on. So we're using white onions for this dish, and white onions are great because they're not quite as sweet as yellow onions, and they have this nice piquancy that helps balance the sweetness of the chilies and the pork. Well, actually, we, we talked about this one other time. Sweet onions, naturally sweet raw onions, are not as sweet when you cook them. It's like a yellow onion that's not that sweet. When you cook it, it becomes sweeter. So that's two chopped white onions, and we're gonna cook them down in the lard over medium heat, about eight to 10 minutes, until they're softened and beginning to brown. So those onions have really cooked down. So let's add the rest of our flavorings. First of all, garlic. It's six cloves chopped, and now four teaspoons whole cumin seed. Using the whole cumin seed means the flavor's a little softer, but also adds a little texture, right? Because you get a little burst of flavor. Now oregano. Uh, we're gonna add a teaspoon of oregano, preferably Mexican oregano, which has a slightly stronger, more robust flavor than Turkish. Four teaspoons ground coriander. Adds some nice lightness to the dish. And finally, cayenne. Yeah, you know, the one thing this dish doesn't have enough of are chili peppers. I mean, that's what I was thinking to myself. Well, you know, cayenne's really interesting because when you taste cayenne, it's sort of the back note. So it finishes a little hot. So it helps round out those chilies. And it's just, it's just a little, it's a little accent note in the back. I'm gonna taste it when it's done. I'll tell you if it's got a good back note. It takes about 30 seconds or so for the flavors to release. And now we can finish the dish, Chris. So first of all, we're gonna add a half cup of water. We're gonna add our chili puree, and now the pork. Remember that marinated in the fridge for about an hour. So we can give it a stir. We're gonna cover this. We're gonna put it in a 325 degree oven for two hours, and we're gonna pull it out, take the lid off, give it a good stir, and put it back in for another hour and a quarter, hour and a half. Okay. So Chris, we cooked it covered for two hours, pork's super tender, and now we're gonna finish it. Very simple. We're gonna add a tablespoon of molasses. Really helps bring up the sweetness of those chilies. And now we're gonna add that remaining half cup of puree. Boy, that does look good. It does. Let me give it a stir and then we're ready to go. Just a gorgeous color. I always like putting sour cream on the side so I can then take little... I was gonna ask you about that. I, I thought that was an odd choice, but... Yeah, well, I'm an odd duck. And some fresh lime is great here. Oh, for me, thank you. Now, if you're brave, you can roll it up into a taco. But have it fall down my... I think that, uh, you could. You yeah. could. Yeah, but... I'm more of a dipper. Mmm, that is so good. And also, when you eat it, you know, it's really not that hot. There's real clarity to the dish. A lot of... Chili style dishes are, mm. they're kind of muddy. There's too much going on. And these chilies are very bright and clear. So Matt Card goes to New Mexico, comes back with an authentic, really chili recipe, carne adovada. And, and the takeaway here is that six ounces of dried chilies are there for flavor. It's not just spiciness. It's spicy, but not too spicy. So chilies really can be all about flavor. So carne adovada, if you like chili, this is, in my opinion, the best chili in the world. Great job. Well, thank you. If you travel around the world, especially in the Far East, you notice that people don't have ovens very much. I've been in Vietnam, they don't have ovens, Thailand, etc. 
And so cooking a cake or baking a cake is somewhat problematic. So steaming on top of the stove, however, is something a lot of people do. Of course, the English do with puddings, but it's also done all over the world. So we thought, why not take a chocolate cake, take it out of the oven, and put it on the stove top, and maybe you'd end up with actually a better flavor and texture as well. I love this cake. It comes together so fast. It's a great one to memorize and have in your back pocket. We did a little crafting, and we made a tinfoil circle. And that's gonna go in the bottom of a Dutch oven, and then you just want to add enough water so it comes up about three quarters of the way to your foil circle. It's going to float a little bit. Once it's settled, you just pop your cake pan on top. It's greased with cooking spray, has a parchment round in the bottom, and then greased again. So okay. it'll be pretty easy to get that out. Okay. So let's move on to the batter. In this bowl, I've sifted a cup of all-purpose flour, a third of a cup of cocoa powder. This is Dutch processed cocoa powder we're using here and a teaspoon of baking soda, and then I've got a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then for our wet ingredients, we have a cup of light brown sugar, and this is two large eggs. I'm gonna whisk these together just until it's slightly lightened. And then to that, I'm gonna add six tablespoons of melted salted butter, whisk that in there. And this is a half a cup of sour cream. And we have a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, and then our last couple of ingredients, I'm actually going to combine together. This is a half a cup of water, and this is one teaspoon of instant espresso powder. I usually like to combine these two together. It can clump when you add this to the mixture, so it just dissolves before you add it. And we're adding this espresso powder because that typically adds a nice roasty flavor to the cake, which we kind of missed when we made this on the stovetop. And then I'm literally just dumping in the dry ingredients and lightly whisking these together. This is your kind of recipe, Chris, I can tell. When I was younger, I really did have one of those little light bulb oven things. Oh, me too. And you, this is the kind of recipe you get. Exactly. Right? Pretty much, yeah. All right, and we're just gonna transfer this into the cake pan. I'm gonna cover this, and you'll notice I have more foil on my cover. This is a cast iron Dutch oven, and often with these, there are bumps underneath the lid. And when you're doing a stew or something that's braising in there, those help keep it moist in there. Because it collects and drips back down. Exactly, okay. which, as you can imagine, right. would not be great. So we're going to cover it with a piece of foil just to prevent that from happening. We'll bring it to a boil over high, reduce it to low, and the cake takes about 20 to 25 minutes to cook. That's it? That's it. So, Chris, when the cake was finished cooking, I took the cover off and I actually let the pan cool inside the Dutch oven. It's okay if it stays in the Dutch oven. If you let it cool long enough, you can pick it up with your fingers. Okay. And then transfer it to a cooling rack to let it finish cooling. Okay. So now I'm just gonna dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar. We like it with powdered sugar. You could also have this with vanilla ice cream if you wanna add a little richness. You ready to eat it? Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Mmm. I love this cake. Sublime. You know, I'm going to say something that a lot of people disagree with, which is sometimes chocolate cake is too chocolatey. It sounds crazy, but it, you, know, you eat it, it's just too much fudgy, it's, it's too heavy. This has great chocolate flavor, but it's, it's, it's a little more subtle, which is great. It's almost like a red velvet cake. It, it has that sort of satiny texture to it. It's a great texture, and, and it's got a great flavor, but it doesn't hit you over the head. So stovetop chocolate cake on top of the stove, steam, takes about 10 minutes to throw together, 25 minutes to bake. I think it's my go-to chocolate cake. Thank you. Today at Milk Street, it's about Mexican chicken soup, Mexico being one of our favorite stops on the culinary tour. This is really a pozole, which is a soup or stew made with pozole, which is hominy, which is dried corn, which is treated in alkali solution like lye. It softens, it breaks down the cellulose and get those nice, big, soft pieces. Uh, there's white pozole, there's green, which is this one, because it has tomatillos, which are green, it's a green sauce. There's also red pozole, which has a chili sauce, and obviously it's red. So this is green pozole, or Mexican chicken soup. We're going to start with making a broth first, using fresh chicken, and then we're going to strain that broth and use the broth then to make the soup that we're going to eat. The thing we're doing here is we're using a lot of the Mexican flavors that are traditional there. So we're going to start with some fresh herbs, we have a whole bunch of cilantro here. We're simply going to cut the stems away. Now the stems are going to be used in the broth 
the greens are going to be used in the soup Good, itself. Because they right. have a lot of flavor. Oh, a lot of flavor. It's a great way of using the whole bunch of herbs without any waste. And so we're just going to chop this coarsely and put these aside to save for the soup later. We're going to take these cilantro stems and add them to the pot. We already have 10 cups of plain water in this pot, and then we build flavor by the ingredients we add to the water. We're using dried chilies in the broth, and we're using fresh chilies in the soup itself. These are dried poblanos, and we want to break them in half so that the broth can get inside the chilies as well as outside. They're a little tough sometimes, but see all the seeds in there? Mm -hmm. That adds a lot of flavor to the broth. Look at that. That's gorgeous. When you dry a chili like this, by removing all the moisture, you concentrate the flavors, and it's perfect to put it in the broth. Now, for spices, we have two tablespoons each, cumin, and two tablespoons coriander, and then we have a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now, Milk Street Basic, we use a whole head of garlic to flavor the broth. It has a lot of intense flavor. I'm gonna cut off the top third. Go, see? All those cloves opened up. Yeah, the, the nice thing is it's no work. And you also, if you're not crushing the garlic, you're not going to get all that extra really pungent garlic flavor. So it's, it has a rich, sweet background to the soup, yeah. And every good broth has an onion. One onion quartered. Okay, let's give that a quick stir. Good. So we're going to let this come to a boil, then reduce it to a simmer, and let it simmer for a good 10 minutes to let the flavor start blending before we add the chicken. Okay. Here's the chicken we're going to be using, the dark meat of the chicken legs. When this has simmered for 10 minutes, we'll add the chicken, we'll bring it back up to a boil, and then simmer this, partially covered, for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. So Chris, while our homemade broth is simmering, we're gonna start building the ingredients for the soup. These are the fresh chilies we talked about earlier. These are the poblanos. These are great poblanos here. These are sweet, more sweet than, than spicy like a bell pepper. And we have two jalapenos, which we know are pretty fiery and spicy. So we're gonna put them on the sheet tray because we're gonna char the skins. By doing that, it gives a little bit of smokiness to the pepper and it's delicious in the soup. Okay. We're gonna use the broiler to char these. It takes about 10 to 12 minutes and you wanna turn them constantly so all the skin gets blackened. The reason for using the broiler is it's faster and I think it blisters more thoroughly, better than a skillet. Okay. So Chris, these are the poblanos and the jalapenos that we charred under the broiler. We have put them in the bowl. We had them covered for about 10 minutes so that the steam could accumulate and loosen the skins. And you can see they've wilted down a little bit. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at that, how easy the skins come off. So just pull the stem out and scrape off the seeds. Now, here's the thing about the seeds. The seeds are where the spiciness of these fresh peppers are, the heat of the spice, that is. So if you like it and super spicy, well, leave all the seeds in. We're gonna put them in the food processor and do the same thing to all the rest. The poblanos are milder. They don't have as much heat kick as these jalapenos do. So we're gonna definitely remove more seeds from the jalapenos. Everything goes into the processor. And now we come to a very important ingredient for this soup. These are tomatillos. This one first prize at the, <laughs> at at the, the Minneapolis State Fair. State Fair. <laughs> this is huge. That is huge. They're, yeah. no, they're normally... Uh, half yeah. the size. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Now, you see this papery husk that grows around them? You need to peel that off. So these are like little green tomatoes, except they're much more fleshy inside. They're firm. They're almost crispy inside. We're just going to quarter them. Okay, so now we have a total of one pound of tomatillos. We're going to put those in. And we have six to eight pulses. That's it. Perfect. All right, so this looks good. We're going to let it sit until we're ready to use it for the soup. Okay. And we're going to come over here to say that we have removed the chicken from the broth, removed that whole head of garlic that's in the broth, and look at the broth. We strained the broth out, and that's the color that's left. It's like a gloss de viande, the old French stock. It's very rich. Yeah. It is, if you insist on putting French in this. But <laughs> in this Mexican soup. <laughs> right. And now we're going to start building the soup with all these flavors that we've already made. We're going to add two tablespoons of a neutral oil. We want about a medium high on this. We'll add one onion chopped. We had a quartered onion in the broth, and now we'd have another onion chopped for the soup. And a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, so the onions are on their way to being golden brown. They need about five to seven minutes to develop some deep flavor, and then they'll be ready for the soup. Okay. Our onions are golden brown, 
and we are ready now to proceed with the soup. So remember the coriander and cumin seeds mm -hmm. we used in the broth? Obviously, we're going to use the ground in the soup. We have a tablespoon of ground coriander, tablespoon of ground cumin, and then we're adding also two teaspoons of oregano. If you can find Mexican oregano, get that. We're going to let those toast for about a minute. And then we have our mixture of the charred chili and the tomatillos, which we're going to add to the soup now. Hence, it's a green pozole, it, obviously. The tomatillos give off a lot of liquid, so we need to let some of that evaporate. It takes about five minutes for that to happen, and it helps to cook them through as well. I think these tomatillos are sweated and thickened. And now we're going to add that beautiful broth we made earlier. Okay. And that's what I mean by plain water and a few ingredients, less than an hour, and you've got that. Like water for broth. Yes. Yes, there we are. So we're going to give that a chance to come up to the simmer. And in the meantime, we are going to take that head of garlic that is now soft, and we're going to squeeze out the cloves. Look at that. Okay? And, it, and it's very pasty, as you can see. So that's going to add a lot of flavor to the whole soup. I, I don't like that garlicky aftertaste. Yeah, I'm, this, this doesn't I'm have that. It doesn't have that sort of bite you know, that stays with you. It's almost like when you roast garlic and mm -hmm. it gets that deep caramelized right. sweetness. It, it's pretty much the same thing in the broth. We have the chicken that we shredded. We took off the bone while it was still warm. And we have the hominy here that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then we have that chopped fresh cilantro that we took from the stems earlier when we were making the broth. These are the items that you want to add right before you serve the soup. But we're not going to wait. So we're ready to add the chicken. So that was one and a half to two pounds of chicken legs that we started with, and we took it off the bone. This is one 15 ounce can of hominy. And now the hominy's already cooked. We're just heating it through in the soup. And then we have all that fresh cilantro. Mm. Yeah, right? You know, when I was learning to cook, you know, a century ago, it was always a tablespoon uh, of an herb, or we didn't right. even use cilantro, parsley, a little bit of this. Like, you know, now, now most of it's a handful, it's a bowl full, it's three cups of basil in a stir fry. It's just a lot of herbs. We've caught up with the rest of the world. We have, sort of, yeah. We're getting there. Well, you said something that really struck a chord with me, and, it, and that is there is no ethnic cooking. When you travel around the world, it's all home cooking. Well, it's just somebody's cooking dinner. Right. Well, that's what I mean. Right. To them, it's home cooking. Right. I mean, do they think that a hamburger is ethnic cooking? Maybe, but it's not to us. Well, I always say, if you go to Mexico City and ask people what they're having for dinner, they're not going to say Mexican food. <laughs> right. That's for sure. Right. They're just going to have dinner. Right. So this is simmering. And it's ready. And it's ready. Okay. Ugh. This soup has the color of the earth, doesn't it? And that big old handful of cilantro we threw in there, <laughs> not a <laughs> tablespoon. And we even have more cilantro for on top if you want. Okay. The tomatillos are going to give it a tangy pungency. Have a little sour cream. Now, some people like it on the side, and some people like it in the middle. Oh, on the side of the bowl? Yeah. Oh, middle, please. Okay, I just want to. Okay. No, I wonder if you were strange. <laughs> well. <laughs> Okay, and here we have some pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds, okay. and they've been toasted. And you did my sour cream, I'll do your pepitas. And of course, yes. Ready? Here we go. Oh, how do I describe it? This is, this is one of the hardest things I've ever had to describe, because you have the brightness of citrus, the lime juice, you have the pasole, you, know, you have the hominy, yeah. pepitas, the chilies. It has about eight different things in a bowl. Right. right. Layers and layers and layers. If you go around the world and eat chicken soup in every country, because every country has chicken soup, mm -hmm. you can tell a lot about the cuisine. I mean, this tells you everything, well, tells you a lot about Mexican cooking. Right. A Mexican chicken soup, it's really a pozole, which means it's a green stew with hominy in it. it. Has chicken in it, has chilies, lots of different kinds, both at the beginning and at the end. And obviously it has the crunch of pita, the fresh cilantro, the lime juice, everything you could possibly want in one bowl. And it started with water. <laughs> what could be better than that? You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. And I strongly suggest you get this recipe. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular has been offering no-contract wireless plans designed to help people do more of what they like. Our U.S.-based customer service team can help find a plan that fits you. To learn more, visit ConsumerCellular.tv. 
Cooking happens in the kitchen, but life happens around the kitchen table. The 1919 Collection, celebrating yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Visit us at www.1919cookware.com. Fantastic. So this is called uh, Goi Nam Wa, which is these bananas here. Uh, we have something similar to it in the States called Burro Banana or Thai Banana. And he makes a batter and he cooks it in the palm oil for a while, 10 15 minutes, at a relatively low temperature. I'm not going home. You dig it? Here. You have an extra room in your house? Yeah, we do. <laughs>